All right, and we uh, continue. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. I'd like to, to show you a, a case of um, kyphosis in uh, a campomelic, campomelic dysplasia. Um, I'm an orthopedic surgeon in uh, Utrecht, the, the Netherlands. Uh, these are my disclosures. Um, the case was uh, referred to us uh, when he was a five-year-old boy. Uh, he had a tracheal uh, for which he was treated with a, a cannula. He was not on nighttime ventilation. Uh, he had no neurological complaints, but he was quite weak, uh, for he was only an in-house walker. Uh, there was no genetic uh, anatomy uh, identified, but what you can see on this uh, CT reconstruction, he was missing his uh, ischial bones. Does that ring a bell for anyone? It did not to me unless, until I met some of the French guys, and as you know, uh, especially uh, Dubousset, he has invented everything uh, already, and he also invented this syndrome, apparently. Uh, this was described in uh, 2014, the ischial vertebral dysplasia, which very accurately described actually what I was looking at. It, it is an attenuated form of uh, pomalic dysplasia, which is associated with a very high rate of progression, which cannot be controlled with a brace. Uh, and the worst thing is that surgical treatments of this uh, disease have a, a very high risk of severe complications, including death and uh, paraplegia. Um, so what to do? Uh, he was referred to as obviously because he was progressive, so brace treatment did not seem to be an option anymore. You had a very short trunk of about uh, 15 centimeters. So what should we do? Should we do a short segment fixation, uh, another trial with an orthosis, plaster, or growth-friendly instrumentation? So let's say uh, the, for the, first, the first option, short segment correction and fusion. One shot. Nobody would, would do that? Yeah, you would do that. Yeah, if you, yeah. I will come back to that later. Another trial with orthosis. Yeah, we didn't feel that would make a difference. Uh, traction and plaster, like a metacast, is that an option? No? And then growth friendly instrumentation. Please. Yeah. Yeah, take care <laughs> to don't miss the pedicle. That's a good point. I did not read that in his paper. Uh, you, so you found it out later, probably. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, but, but uh, so I thought only a few hands, so most of you don't know what to do now. That's my conclusion. We, we thought it would at least be very, very wise to, to start with a um, uh, attraction uh, uh, here. I mean, as you have seen in the previous slide, his, his cord was definitely at risk and progression would definitely cause a, a paraplegia in this patient. So we thought let's first do halograph retraction. It's cheap, it's efficient, it very well allows you to control uh, neuromonitoring or actually you, you have, have feedback on the neuromotors uh, during the traction while he is uh, corrected. It may obviate a lot of uh, difficult and, uh, and, and dangerous uh, surgical uh, treatment. And if that is done, we can decide to go for a sliding rod or some other growth guidance uh, to allow him some further growth. So that's what we did. And as I told you uh, previously, we, we have set up a, an ambulant traction protocol in the Netherlands. Actually, uh, I think 80% of the patients uh, are referred to our center. We are in the middle of the Netherlands, and the Netherlands is, um, <laughs> well, very small compared to America. Actually, everyone is li living in one big town, so that's, that's not, uh, not, not such an issue, the distances. So the people come to our place. We have uh, a combination with the, uh, with the rehab doctors. They, they like to do this. It's something different for them also. So they, they are very enthusiastic to make all kinds of wheelchair adaptations and, and, and 
and, and um, uh, what you call them uh, pulleys and stuff. Actually, what you can see on, on the right, that is, that is a spring-based uh, traction device. That is much easier to transport because the weights in, in, in the cars are always uh, banging around. They came up with this thing, which can be adjusted. So we put it on the wheelchair, we adjust it uh, until the right force. So we typically um, counsel these patients that they come to our hospital, uh, get a halo, and then during a week or so, we, we, we can increase the weight until 50% body weight or what is uh, accepted. And then they send, we send them home and see how it goes. Uh, they have regular follow-ups, and that works uh, pretty well. Um, and this is, this is uh, the bonus you get from just traction. I mean, with, with, the, with a very severe and, and, and dangerous uh, kyphosis, uh, progressive kyphosis of about 100 degrees, he recovered to an almost normal uh, kyphosis just by traction. So at that time, uh, we decided to do the surgery. Uh, we had a very short epical fusion. Uh, I think there were pedicles, but, but of course, you, we, we do it freehand, so I did not really uh, uh, check that. Um, uh, at the end of surgery, though, he had some loss of neuromonitoring, uh, so we could not give him the uh, correction as uh, intended. Uh, so he had a bit less correction, as you can see in the CT and the standing x-ray. He recovered very well, could go home in a few days. After one year, he was still doing fine, although his kyphosis is progressing a bit. And uh, more than two years later, he's eight years old now, we, we saw him recently, and he shows the complications we see with all rowing systems. He had a rowing rod, he has an anchor problem. So we are still in debate what to do now, if we should permanently fuse him, uh, wait and see, or, or revise uh, the system. But I think the message uh, is that um, for these type of cases, halogravity is, is a very uh, effective way to make complicated things uh, easy. Uh, in the Dutch setting, it's very well possible to do it in, in a, as a home uh, attraction. Um, but some questions I still have is maybe that idea to fuse it from the beginning is, 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 is the right choice because it seems that these patients with compomelic uh, dysplasia don't grow so much. Uh, that would have been an option as well, and obviously we are not uh, done with this kid. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. I, I think you, you have compomelic uh, dysplasia, and this type, this, this ischiovertebral type, should be an attenuated form. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not sure. I did not find much difficulty with, with instrumentation in this kit. All right. Can you go back to your halo device? Is it a self designed? Uh Sorry? <laughs> well, to be I honest, this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, this, 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 this orange thing, this comes from the industry where they have tools hanging uh, when they have the assembly line, the tools hanging down, and these tools, like drill machines or other heavy machines, they need to be equilibrated so that it's very easy for the personnel to handle them. And that's why they use these boxes for it. So normally they are in, 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 in uh, so they're not for medical use. They, they, are, they are from an assembly line. Uh, and you can adjust them just to have so your tool at the right spot. It's, 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 it's a spring, like, like in, a, in a centimeter, that type of spring. And you can just adjust it. Yeah. Um, question. So uh, I'm curious about the home halo. And, and obviously, like you said, it's a little bit different situation than we may have yeah. over here. There are people in the crowd, it sounds like, who also have experience with home halo. I'm curious, have you or has anybody else in the room had a problem sending a child home with halo? Because there was a lot of fear in our hospital about actually sending somebody home. 
I don't think there's a whole lot of evidence that it's been yeah. a, a big downside of yeah, we, we just reviewed our, our first 30 cases in this in this fashion, and um, we, we had one case where the the patient actually was uncomfortable, uh, more more from a psychological point of view. That was not a success, uh, but I did not see any problems with 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 fixation of things. We actually we always use four pins and not six. Uh, we did a few mechanical studies, which shows that it doesn't make sense to use six actually, um, and and. Uh, infections are no, not, not an issue as far as I have seen. So this guy has six pins. Yes, that was before we converted to that. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of the earliest. But thank you. <laughs> yeah. Nick. Uh, uh, yeah. Comments. Yeah. Just one question. How did you decide your levels? Because one of the pitfalls with halo gravity is deciding levels. Do you base your your instrumentation on your best look in halo gravity or your pre halo gravity? Because that's definitely one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know what equipment you mean. The, the halo well, ring or the the, the wheelchair? Oh no. Luckily, they are not that strict uh, yeah, in, in the Netherlands. <laughs> And, and there was one other question, and that was very relevant to, 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 to determine your position. Yeah, I, I think it, uh, for scoliosis, I definitely prefer to look at the, the situation before halo. Uh, in kyphosis, it's a bit different, especially the, the big kyphosis. You, 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 if you don't want to go to the cervical spine, you probably base it on what you achieved with traction. Rick, you have last question for this session. That's what we did, yeah. But but we did not use uh, shellage screws, but more of uh, a wedding band that was not uh, yeah, block. Yeah, exactly. That's what we did. Okay, we're going to end this little Thanks. session and move to the next one. Thank you, guys. <laughs>